So the question I get asked a lot um, is why do we need a mental health innovation center in the first place? Right now, we are stuck in about a, you know, a 60 year old model in mental health and how we deliver services. Um, we still, for the most part, wait until people get really, really sick and then we scramble to find them care. And unfortunately, the system doesn't have the capacity. But since we know that we can't just you know, overnight uh, add capacity, we have to start thinking differently. Virtual reality, if you haven't tried it, um, we talk about it as the immersive environment. And it's different from any other kind of electronic media in that instead of watching a flat screen, you experience it in every direction. Just like you're immersed in water and you experience it everywhere, it's the same thing in VR. And that's significant because what it's really good at doing is tricking your brain. So as a result, as one of the most powerful um, you know, potential tools in mental health, it's unlocked the door for all kinds of new possibilities for treatment and prevention uh, in mental health. And uh, we're now working to help them develop and, and uh, test modules for pretty much every phobia that you can think of. Um, everything from you know, fear of spiders to dogs, heights, uh, fear of flying, and, and many, many others that are in our pipeline. Um, PTSD is another area where we've had tremendous success with VR. And what they do is they can take people back in a virtual environment and recreate any number of scenarios. So being on foot patrol or being in a convoy. And, and they go through these different scenarios until they trigger panic so that they know what it is that's, that's causing the panic. Well, once they know what the trigger is, then the therapist can do their job. Using virtual scenarios, anything that we rely on role play now, VR can do better. So that addicts who are coming out of um, a recovery program can practice in, in uh, environments that are more like real uh, user environments. And it's triggering real cravings. So it's a highly charged environment where they can build situational confidence, practice those skills, but they're not at risk of losing their sobriety. And there's a, a group now at Children's Hospital that we're working with to start using VR um, with their um, anesthesiologist for pain management. Um, this is called Snow World. And Snow World was developed for uh, kids in pediatric burn units. And it's a virtual environment. And the kids put it on during the procedure. And it's all these cold weather things. So they build snowmen. They get to you know, play games and throw snowballs at penguins and do this stuff. And they found in the studies that it had up to a 42% reduction in pain on self-reported pain scales. Not, not with any other additional medication, but just this. Now, 42%, you're getting into opioid territory right there without giving them any medication at all. I'm gonna end by giving um, one example of some exciting work uh, that we're doing up in Alaska. We got contacted by the Department of Corrections up there and they said, you know, we have some long-standing problems we haven't been able to solve. Um, in the dark winter months, um, uh, like the rest of the state, we see more violence among our prisoners, we see suicide attempts go up, and we see burnout with our uh, corrections staff, um, and we don't know what to do about that. Um, we also have recidivism rates like everywhere else in the country where we have uh, over 75% of the people uh, that leave prison are back in within five years. And um, we're, uh, we're working with um, Samsung to develop a, um, a platform so that these guys can meditate once every day in a, in a beautiful sunny environment, even when it's cold and dark outside. Um, we learned the hard way when talking about this not to say uh, that they can escape for a few minutes every day. Um, we, were, we were scolded by the Department of Corrections for using uh, that word. So there, there's enough to indicate that, yeah, VR can be um, you know, so powerful in building empathy that it actually can motivate people to give more. You know, obviously, as with all things, you know, we need to study it more. But yeah, incredible, incredible potential there. I really appreciate your time today, and thank you for listening, and I'm happy to answer any questions that we have.